Hello, everyone. My name is Courtney Huenkel. I am the English language teaching consultant for Seed Attica here in France, a main distributor and importer of foreign language books, language teaching methods, uh, literature, en VO, um, and readers, etc. from pretty much uh, any country, all the languages. I personally am specialized in English and English language teaching methods. Uh, so today we're going to look at a brand new uh, course book from Oxford University Press. Uh, called Beehive. Um, this course is to take the place of family and friends uh, in their in their current list or their previous list, I guess, uh, which means that it is going to be the same sort of methodology, same sort of progression, same um, level ambition, uh, I suppose. Uh, so basically take the spot because there's each publisher has a different range. Um, of course books to fit different needs, different uh, teaching types, uh, different levels, etc. So Beehive is, for all intents and purposes, the new family and friends. Family and friends will probably be available for a little bit, um, but they won't um, guarantee uh, availability um, um, from now on, I suppose, but there probably is some stock left, but it's always great, um, a better idea to start a new method at the beginning of its life cycle. So this one is brand new. And so you could start uh, teaching with it from the next rentrée 2022. Um, so let's have a look at Beehive. Um, here are covers, very colorful. Um, again, my job, I think, uh, the reason I do these videos is um, because I can't get to every single one of you. Um, there isn't stock on every single shelf in every single bookshop across France. Um, so uh, the idea is that uh, I can get these videos out to you by email, etc. And you can see the new material um, as much as possible. You're always welcome to get in touch with me if you have any questions, if you'd like to see sample material, um, etc. Uh, I really uh, am very passionate um, about, about what I do, and I do not like to hear that people are using methods that they don't like using, um, or they didn't know there was something else, um, or they didn't have all the right information, etc. So I'm really, uh, really trying to make sure that you get all the information you need so that when you go into the classroom, you're happy with the material you have, and uh, you're a lot more likely um, to, to get better results uh, from your pupils as well, as if you're excited about the material, uh, the students themselves uh, are more likely to be excited about it as well and get the most out of your lessons. So Beehive, uh, just like family and friends, has seven levels from level starter, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, we're going to look at today who it's for, level correspondence, overall aims and objectives, student and teacher components, uh, different packages, uh, they are getting more, a little bit more and more complex, as you might imagine. There's a lot more digital available as well. Not absolutely necessary, but there is a lot more digital available. Um, and we'll have a look at those components um, at, the, at the end of the presentation. There's a lot to get through. Sometimes there's a lot of words on the slides. I won't say every single word, uh, but I figure that way you can pause and read, this, read the slides and get as much information out of this presentation as possible. So here we go. Who is it for level correspondence? There are seven levels, like I said, starter, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a primary course, so aged for pupils between five and 12 years old. Um, it goes up to B1. It's not very often in France that we get up to B1 at the end of primary. Um, but this, I suppose, would be the um, the the way it's, the, one of the, the the ways you could, you could use it. Most people would start at, like um, with other, any other primary books in CP with the starter level, that's what it corresponds to. CE1, you do level one, which correlates to the, prepares for the pre-A1 starters. CE2, level two, pre-A1 uh, pre starters, excuse me. CM1, level three A1 movers, and CM2, level four movers. This would mean that at the end of primary, you're getting your students to an A1 movers exam, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and some schools are starting to do it. Schools have been doing exams for um, for a long time and have um, really got their English program set up and, and running very smoothly. Um, and they must have the time as well to get through the material, as whether it's Kids Box or Family and Friends or any of Bright Ideas or any books. Um, it's it's a it's a lot of material uh, to get to, and it's a high level for uh, a CM1 student uh, in France. 
if you can do that in your school, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, otherwise, um, what happens a lot as well is again, starting the CP, um, a starter level in the CP, that is often, a, it's a wordless level, um, sort of bridging the gap or between whatever they might've done in preschool and primary. So sort of bringing them up into a, a more serious, uh, I guess it's not really serious English program, but um, more structured perhaps um, English program. CE1, CE2, it would be possible to use one book across these two levels. So level one and then CM1, CM2, level two pre and stars, which would mean at the end of CM2, they are uh, able to take the pre-A1 Cambridge Young Learners starters exam at that time. So there's plenty of material to get through. Um, technically, um, level six prepares for the B1 preliminary. Uh, so it is an ambitious method, but again, it is replacing family and friends, which is used very widely um, across, across the country. Uh, so it is, it is possible and it does happen uh, a lot. Um, overall aims and objectives, uh, again, exam success, if your results uh, driven, um, if you like a strong language syllabus, um, then this is, this is a good course for you. As a teacher, you have uh, a lot of support, um, very detailed uh, teaching notes, uh, classroom presentation tools give you a lot of flexibility in how you deliver the material. And within uh, the teacher's uh, package as well, you have um, some professional development things as well to really support you uh, in teaching um, Beehive, but also in your, in your teaching in general. Um, engage students with the real world. Uh, so it's a little bit different. There's a, it's, it's very common at the moment to sort of um, bring in more sort of real world um, images and things into the primary uh, course book. Uh, family and friends was a lot more um, cartoons, uh, more drawings. Um, that's one way that it's different. Again, it's it's the new version of family and friends, but it's so it's going to have that same sort of methodology, same language uh, syllabus as I said before, but more modernized with updated uh, images, um, and also now with more of a focus on global skills, which is a more uh, recent uh, development in teaching and English language teaching in general. So very quickly, what are global skills? Global skills basically are uh, similar to the, I guess a step beyond the 21st century skills, communication, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, um, emotional uh, self-regulation and well-being. So that's sort of added to the 21st century school skills, digital literacy, digital literacy, excuse me. Um, and obviously the ideas of intercultural competences and citizenship. So all those things are packed into your, to your language course, which is, are often parts of the primary syllabus uh, in general. Um, obviously we want to teach them English, but we want to teach them to be good little, uh, good little people. Uh, as well, and all of that can be taught via your English lessons, uh, just as much as in your French lessons. Um, as I said, uh, these do prepare for the Cambridge English qualifications, young learners, starters, movers, and flyers. The syllabus aligns with it, so it's embedded, uh, it's an embedded Cambridge Young Learners syllabus, and at the end of each of these levels, they should be able to take, for example, the end of Beehive 2, um, they should be able to sit the young learners starter, pre and one starters, preparation for movers has technically already begun. Um, and then at the end of Beehive four, they should be able to sit the uh, pre, excuse me, the A1 movers. So two, at the end of two, uh, pre A1 starters, the end of four, uh, A1 movers. And then at the end of Beehive five, uh, the flyers, at the end of Beehive 6, uh, the uh, preliminary for schools, uh, B1. Just like in Family and Friends, although I would say it's a little bit more, even more amped up uh, in Beehive, there's a strong uh, uh, phonics program, which is built into the, uh, to the course book for Family and Friends, but there is also now additional um, books or, or yeah, books that come along with the starter, starter level one and two uh, for extra work on phonics uh, and literacy. Um, a unit structure for levels one to three. I'm gonna pretty much cover that. It changes a little bit from four to six, 
basically four to six, it's this, but it has a little bit more writing. Um, but as we very rarely do levels four to six in France, um, if you have questions on that, uh, I'm happy to help you out. These are the most common levels. Uh, so there's five lessons in a unit and the project and review section looks like this. Vocabulary, grammar, vocabulary and grammar, story, skills and culture and project review. Again, if you've seen my video on bright ideas, I suppose one way that I would um, differentiate between these two is that whereas there's obviously a very strong language program in bright ideas, it feels much more grammar, uh, excuse me, it feels much more content driven. Family and friends is much more sort of in your face language uh, driven. They both do the same thing. They're just going to appeal for different types of teaching um, and different types of teachers. So if we have a look, oops, an empty page there, uh, at the lesson one in vocabulary, oops, excuse me. Uh, so the first lesson, as we saw, is the vocabulary lesson. Um, Again, I'm not gonna read all of it. You can read it, uh, push pause and read it. Uh, this is the language, the vocabulary presentation. Um, the flashcards then in the teacher's re the classroom resource pack will reflect this and you'll have uh, images on flashcards uh, to further teach um, the vocabulary uh, with different games and chants and things like that. Uh, yes, I'll, you have the audio for all of this on the classroom presentation tool, which we'll have a look at later. There are different vocabulary presentation tools on that as well. Here there are eight new vocabulary items. The second lesson is the grammar lesson, which is presented in a cartoon uh, each time. Use it directly into a speaking activity, and then reading and writing. So it's used in different ways, limited reading and writing. Combined vocabulary uh, and grammar. The story spread. This is used to recycle the grammar and the vocabulary that they've learned up to that point. Extra work you've done in the workbook, the classroom resource pack with the flashcards and the games you've done. Um, this will be sort of to bring all of that uh, together in a story and reinforce and recycle that language. There's a culture and skills uh, lesson as well in each unit, it's the fifth lesson. and then project and review. So this is the coll collaboration and communication uh, part of the global skills where the kids work together. Um, they have a clear visual of what they're supposed to come up with here in the middle, a photo of the finished product here so they know what they're, what they're aiming for. So again, it's very structured, it's very scaffolded. Everything sort of builds up um, very carefully to an end task in each, uh, for each lesson and within the project too, of course. There's a video on this page as well. And just very quickly, we won't go into the whole, uh, each of the units, each of um, the whole unit um, walkthrough for starter level, but these are the different lessons within the starter level, vocabulary, grammar, vocabulary and numbers, the story, phonics lesson. This is the starter level, so starter, the very first level in the series. And then there's review after every two units. Just get an idea. So there's plenty of material to get through. Um, starting a new method is always kind of complicated because you have to learn the method yourself. One thing that's good is that it's very similar. Like I said, if you're familiar with family and friends, this shouldn't feel um, completely foreign uh, to you as in terms of getting acquainted with the methodology and et cetera. Um, but uh, it does always follow the same structure. So as the year goes on, progresses, you can start to get more comfortable with the material um, and the different uh, tools you have to present the material, the flashcards, the classroom presentation tool, et cetera. Uh, and whereas there is a lot of material, you will uh, eventually learn, you know, which sort of activities work best with your students and maybe don't do every single activity, uh, but you know uh, the best combination 
um, of materials and activities that work best for your for your pupils um, in any given particular year. Now the packages are um, getting more and more uh, elaborate. <laughs> I wouldn't say complex as in they're hard, just complex as in there's a lot more possibilities um, available than there was before um, with the invention of everything digital now. It's not just tapes and, and CD-ROMs anymore. So the basic package, and this is the one that's going to sell the most in France, would be the student book with online practice. So print student book. I apologize, I don't have any here because it's not even printed yet. Um, uh, I, don't, I haven't even held it in my hands, but hopefully I will soon. Uh, a print student's book inside which you will find a hub code. Now we'll look at that a little bit. Oxford English Hub is the new um, platform or gateway, I would say, um, or portal into all the other OUP platforms. Basically, it's the one-stop shop. It's now the one point of entry to eventually access all of the OUP material you may have. As new courses come on, um, they're automatically added to the Oxford English Hub. Um, courses that aren't coming out in 2022, like Bright Ideas, Learn With Us, for example, which you've probably heard me speak about. Um, Bright Ideas has been added to it. Oxford Discover has been added to it. Um, so they're, they are also being added to the platform. So eventually you only have one place to log into and you'll have all of your Oxford material in one place. Beehive is brand new. And Beehive is one of the first courses that is coming out fully on um, the Oxford English Hub. So we'll call that a uh, hub code. So open the book, there'll be a code in it for the student, they'll give them access, they'll go to the Oxford English Hub, create their account, and they'll have and put in the code from the book, and they'll have their online practice, and then the student resources, the access to the audio and the video. And then of course there's a print uh, workbook uh, sold separately. Moving on to more complicated, so then again this is the one that's most going to be most common, I, th I think, in France, is the student book with digital pack. This is um, a, a lot of, of material. Um, you've got the student's book, print, and then a hub code, like in the previous version, but this time not only with online practice and student resources, we'll also have an ebook version of both the student's book and the workbook. Now, of course, the more things get added to a particular product, the more the price is going to go up. I can't say what the prices are quite yet, but. Um, that will just be a more sort of premium package. This uh, is plenty because if they've got the book themselves, they don't need necessarily the digital one. Um, it's not absolutely necessary. If you've got the budget for it, uh, you can go all out, <laughs> um, but it's not absolutely necessary, but it is, um, it is a possibility. Uh, and then you have a student digital pack, which is digital only. Basically, you buy a hub code, uh, and this hub code would then give you access to the online practice student resources, student and workbook, uh, ebook versions. Um, we don't, you also have then only digital, no print at all, hub code, online practice, student resources, audio and video. Uh, ebook versions of the student book and the workbook on Oxford English Hub. Um, teacher's guide. Okay, so the teacher's pack um, is sort of uh, similar. You can have um, the, what will happen most often, a print teacher's guide, teaching notes, how to use the material, extra optional uh, activities, ways to introduce the vocabulary, flashcard games, game ideas, etc. Uh, plus in it, inside cover, there will be a hub code, which will give you four years access to classroom presentation tool uh, for the student book and the workbook, classroom presentation tool for uh, the phonics as well, for levels starter one and two only. They do not go from uh, three and beyond. So phonics, uh, the phonics books, classroom presentation tools for level starter one and two. Um, Teachers access to the online practice, which is the LMS, which will allow you to follow uh, what your students uh, are doing in their class, and excuse me, in their online work with their hub code. Um, teachers resources, so any of the tests, the assessment, there's unit tests, entry tests, all kinds of tests, uh, extra worksheets, 
and then the different um, bits of um, professional development, professional development available uh, uh, little training courses um, in the in the teachers resource center. Or only digital, so you can have all of the digital in one code, it's just the hub code, uh, and you'll have the a teacher's guide PDF version anyway. So rather than just a print, a print teacher's book with a code, you can purchase from us just a code, uh, which will give you the PDF version of the teaching notes, games, etc. as I mentioned earlier, plus all the digital um, things. Now, uh, for any for class adoptions, we are happy to provide you with the teacher's material. So um, if you're if the students are getting the books and you're buying them from us or from one of our partner bookshop bookshops, because we work with bookshop, uh, we supply all bookshops in France with Oxford University Press, or we sell directly to schools as well. Um, if we obviously if you're buying from us, we'll know about it because you'll be coming through me very probably. Uh, and I can provide you with the code and or the, the teacher's book. Uh, with the codes, or if you're working with the bookshop, um, let me know so I can see the order and I can provide you with the, the teacher's material as well. Uh, there's also classroom resources pack available, um, uh, which is a physical object, which again, I haven't seen because it doesn't exist yet, I don't believe. Um, flashcards, very probably story cards. Um, let's have, oh, there's my cat. <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> Um, so very uh, complete pack uh, for uh, teachers and students. And I believe that we've come to the end of that part of the program. I uh, will now change my, hopefully I'll get into the uh, digital resources to give you um, to give you um, an idea of what the digital components look like. They're very complete, they're all brand new. This is the most, uh, uh, it's a very uh, modern platform. Um, everything is brand new, spick new, up to date, all in one place, especially now with Beehive as it is. Um, one of the first courses to be included on the uh, Oxford English Hub. Um, so let me, I'll just log out so you can see what all this looks like. Um, So you go to the uh, englishhub.oup.com, um, sign in or register. If you have an Oxford ID already from any other password, from any other platforms, you can use that. So I have that, I'm gonna sign in, otherwise you register. And so far, <clears throat> This is what I've got, it looks like this. Um, so here, uh, if I click on Beehive, you have uh, everything that you have for Beehive. You've got access to the classroom presentation tool, which is stored on Oxford Learners Bookshelf. You've got that for the workbook as well. You've got access to the online practice as well as the uh, phonics starter classroom presentation tool level one and level two. So this is a hub code for a teacher. This is the, the digital that you get. So if we have a look at the classroom presentation tool first for the student's book. I'm not in a place where my internet is very strong, so I apologize. Here it comes. I want to open it here, open it from an app, or you can download, <coughs> excuse me, a desktop app. I'm gonna open it online. And it is called Classroom Presentation Tools because what's different about this and the student ebook, student's book or workbook, is that there are more presentation tools. It's gonna to be easier to teach with it. You're gonna have, it's easier to reveal answers, easier to, um, um, to focus, for example. When, um, so it is book on screen as though you had the book in your hands, turning the pages, which should give you an idea. This is the level one, to give you an idea of some of the topics. Again, primary books often cover the same syllabus. That's not, uh, it's, it's not gonna, it's not a revolutionary each time. What, do, what is the first vocabulary? School, toys, uh, um, food, 
colors, this sort of thing. It's going to be the way it's taught, the images, um, the speed, which in the progression, uh, family and friends are now beehive is a fairly uh, fast paced, quickly progressing uh, method and quite ambitious. So whereas um, a lower level book might have six level, six words of vocabulary per unit, here we're going to be eight, nine or 10, et cetera. So it's gonna be a little bit more ambitious in its expectations um, and a little bit more fuller on, I suppose. But again, we still have the body, the family, outdoors, my things, toys, um, clothes, food, uh, et cetera. So if um, you can uh, use this to turn the pages, this little arrow here on the right, or you can jump to a page here by putting in the number. And jump to one. It is all interactive. So if you click on this, the audio uh, bar will come up. I don't think I've parked it. So up. again, you click on it. Listening seven. And the audio comes up. You can slow it down. You can speed it up. This is a vocabulary presentation. The internet wants to work. So again, all of the, um, you'll have flashcards that are going to um, help teaching, um, help to teach uh, the new vocabulary. So here is a vocabulary presentation extra feature, for example, you can put this up on the board or online as I am doing. Uh, now, door. So you have that for each of the, um, the vocabulary words here. Um, keep going. Another thing that I like very much with the Oxford Classroom Presentation Tools is this feature. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to zoom back out, which is called Focus. And uh, you click on Focus and you can, you see, uh, autom so you see predefined squares that sort of pop up that again, no predefined squares, click on focus, predefined squares. And if you click on that, then it auto focuses and zooms into exactly what you want to show whatever you're working on. Um, I think that's great uh, and very useful. Here, we see that there are uh, outlined um, blue boxes. You can click on it to do the activity with the students, oops. Uh, or you can just reveal them one by one by clicking on show answers and the answers one by one. Uh, okay, so that's the classroom presentation tool. You can go directly to, since you have a code for the workbook as well, you can go directly to the corresponding workbook pages like this. Okay, if you want to go back to the class book, just click on that. Um, now we'll have a look at the uh, teacher's resource. Uh, so I don't know, actually, since um, what we'll do is we'll look at the, um, this is from the 
Oxford Learner's Bookshelf View, the literacy, uh, the phonics and literacy books as well. <clears throat> okay, so here we have the phonics and literally literacy uh, book for level one as a classroom presentation tool, just to give you an idea. Listen and sing the b song. B, it's the b. <laughs> Let's sing ba, ba, ba. Let's sing ba, let's sing ba, ba, ba. Let's sing ba. Um, go through the different sounds. There's a story. <clears throat> Listen and read. Hello, I'm Tim. I'm more sounds. Well, so that comes with the um, the the Oxford for the teachers hub code. Now, I'd like to go quickly to make sure I'm sharing the right page I am to the um, Teachers Resource Center slash online practice. So this is the, the teacher's version, but I'll show you what um, what um, which part is the student part, which part is the teacher's part, because the teacher's part, can, the teacher can see everything, the student sees um, the practice part. Oops, I chose the wrong one. Um, online practice. Sorry about that. The online practice. Here we go. So it's the same platform. Uh, if you're using other courses um, as Oxford Discover, Oxford Discover Futures, Bright Ideas, Learn With Us, English File, Headway, you name it. Any of the new courses are on this um, uh, platform. This middle bit is what the student sees because that is the actual practice. Um, the teacher's version is different in uh, because of the, this bar over here. Um, so you've got, uh, oops, get that out of the way. Seven activities in the starter unit. Other than that, you've got around 24 for uh, each of the units. So what does that look like? Unit one, you've got it split up into the lessons because it, it is blended learning. So it goes, uh, it matches. Um, what is done in each of the lessons. So three activities for the vocabulary, three activities for the grammar. You'll find the same unit structure here. Activities for the vocabulary and grammar, the story and the skills, uh, and then the project. So if we have a look at the vocabulary activities, it's vocabulary presentation. Um, Listening. Window. Window. Door. Door. Desk. Desk. Clock. Clock. Chair. Board. Board. I can check my answers. And I got a perfect score. So there's different there's different ways uh, basically a mixture of uh, listening um, and 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 reading to help teach the vocabulary. This is the grammar. Again, still grammar using the same uh, the same vocabulary. So it's very structured, very scaffolded, and uses a lot of sort of spiraling to make sure that language keeps coming back. We don't learn something and then move on. Uh, and that is a lot of the benefits of a course book in general, but this one, since it's so language focused, is really good at keep, uh, you know, using, uh, reusing that language that keeps being, that, that, that's being taught and reusing it in different contexts uh, and for different parts of the lesson, different parts of the unit. 
it's getting more complicated. I created a match. So if you uh, beehive, uh, and the, then on the Oxford Hub, you will see all the teachers' resources that come along with it. So these are the things that you can project or get into, but you have also the resources here uh, to get started, course overview, PDF of the teacher's guide. This is the professional development for teachers I was talking about. So you've got different lessons here that you can download, the class audio, the video, uh, flashcards, um, um, more work on phonics, additional professional development on global skills and effective feedback, all of the tests. Just ooh, guide. Um, but so you've got a lot of um, a lot of material here. I don't think we looked at any of the videos. Um, this is a project video. This is the project video. Our survey. What's your favourite toy? Teddy, skateboard, plane, ball. Let's ask 10 students. Hi Tia. What's your favourite toy? Teddy, skateboard, plane or ball? My favourite toy is plane. A plane. Thanks. This is really good because it, it shows you basically how to put it into place. This is the project. Um, I didn't pay attention to unit two, but it must be creating a chart about what their favorite toy is. And so you can really model um, uh, the language to the pupils um, with the video and obviously the, the, the structuring and the, the lessons building up to it throughout the unit. And they get to see other kids uh, doing it. So that is, um, that's good stuff. I'm pretty excited about this course. I love family and friends. Um, I've talked about family and friends for so many years. I've been doing this for a long time. Um, and um, I was sad to see it go and I was wondering what they're gonna replace it with. I'm very pleased. Um, it's extremely complete course, just like family and friends. Um, lots of material. Again, nobody says you have to use all of the material but there's so much to pick and choose from um, that. And now with it being all refreshed and brand new and colorful and lovely, um, I really think, um, I really think, uh, definitely if you like teaching with family and friends before, I really think you'll, you'll like teaching with this one. And if uh, you haven't taught with family and friends before, if you've taught something else or you've never used a book, um, I invite you to get in touch. You can find out how, um, how to put something like this into place. I believe that's it. I hope this was informative. I apologize. I think it was quite long, but there's so much um, to go through. Um, please let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to, uh, to working with you in the future if I'm not already, uh, or hopefully I plan on um, um, organizing uh, sessions throughout the country, um, teacher training sessions with, with the key publishers so we can all get together and you can look at them uh, and, um, and benefit from um, each of the publishers, um, experts. Uh, and different different subjects. I'd like to do little training sessions on teaching vocabulary or global skills, et cetera, in different parts of the country. So hopefully, um, if I don't know you, we can meet you. I can meet you one of those. Anyway, I thank you very much for listening, and uh, please get in touch if you have any questions at all. Thanks.